Today I am joined by Femi Oyadaran, one of the top sommeliers in South Carolina. Femi is a Nigerian American who is here today to discuss his immigration story to America, his incredible career as a sommelier, and how he discovered his love of wine. Femi co-opened Graft Wine Shop and Bar located in downtown Charleston, South Carolina, and he has some fun but still sophisticated Halloween treat ideas for the adults for this year's Halloween celebration. Welcome, Femi. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing so, well. so I have in front of me all of this chocolate and candies and wine, and we're gonna we're gonna do some wine tasting with you and the entire Brad Squad in a little bit. But before we do that, uh, you're you're one of the top sommeliers in South Carolina. But can you tell everybody out there what is a sommelier? Um, sommelier is uh, simply a wine steward, somebody who has some knowledge, but even more important is an extension of hospitality. Uh, I, I simply am someone that communicates to a guest what they're looking for. So anybody can call themselves a sommelier or you have to go to school to become a sommelier? You know, can oh, anyone hang up I, a sign and say I'm a wine expert? Yeah, sommelier is a job title. If I hired someone to work in my place today, they'd be a sommelier in my title. But if you want to be certified or have some sort of distinction, then you have to go take an exam. There are several certified bodies. Uh, I chose to go through the Court of Master Sommeliers, and I'm within that, I am an advanced sommelier. But uh, you certainly do not have to take any exam to uh, prove that you're proficient to me. So the advanced sommelier, where is that on the pecking order? Is that like the highest degree you could have, the second highest degree? Second it's the second to last uh, examination in the court, so it's the third level out of four. And and how many people do you think reached that level? You know, I don't know for sure, but I would imagine it's somewhere around a thousand. And how long did you have to study to get to that level? For me, it took a very short amount of time. I passed my advanced level about a year and a half or so after um, I took my first exam. So you weren't always a sommelier. You were a DJ beforehand. Is that correct? Yeah. You know, DJ was a part of what I did. I was definitely very involved in music. I uh, performed with a few different bands. I DJed here and there, and then I also uh, owned a promotion company. So I'd bring uh, um, acts from out of town and uh, host them in, in uh, different spaces in Charleston. So, so who, so who are your favorite artists? Oh man, so many. It depends on the day. It's yeah. like wine, you know different wines I want to drink, and I've got different uh, people I want to listen to. Give me an example of like a wine that you would drink and some song you would listen to. A song I would listen to? With like, yeah, <laughs> with like a favorite wine and song <laughs> combo that you have. It, it depends. It depends on the day, but I tell you what, just because I'm feeling good today, I'll say that uh, today I would drink uh, some Pinot Noir from Kelly Fox in Oregon. Why, why is that? That's just a happy, happy drink or? Because the wine is delicious. It's, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Delicious? Because their wines are delicious. Perfect, perfect. So how did you trick? Music wise, wise will say, listen to Donny Hathaway these songs for you live. I think that's great. <laughs> and you have a go, you have a go-to wine and song when you want to be a little more romantic with somebody. I think that's a perfect combination right there. Right there, perfect, perfect. So sure. how how did you get? How did you go from being a DJ and in the entertainment business to being a sommelier? Because. Uh, being a DJ, well, I wasn't just a DJ, but doing all those things is a lot of fun, but it doesn't always pay the bills. Ah. So I started working in restaurants to kind of fund what I was doing at the time. And from working in restaurants to really being around food and great wine personalities, I kind of took an interest, picked up some books and dove deep into the world of wine. Wow. Your wine shop, is that where you are right now? It's the wine shop and bar. It's called Graft in South Carolina. Tell us about your business. Oh man, Graft is a lot of fun. Graft is certainly a labor of love. It's a uh, project started by uh, my partner, Miles White and I. It's a really unique concept. It kind of is the best of both worlds. We are a, a retail store and a wine bar. And uh, the great thing about what we do here is that you can buy a bottle of wine and take it home or you can, if you want, you can uh, sit down, have a glass, shop for a bottle, or you can grab a bottle off the shelf and drink here with us. And we always have good music playing and uh, it's a good time. So it's really social and I think it makes wine not just accessible, but it makes it sexy at the same time. You know, I think one of the biggest things with wine is people get intimidated. They look at a wine list when they go to a restaurant. They don't know one wine from the next. They don't know the grapes, the different regions, the different types of wines. Yeah. What do you think about that? 
I think that that's unfortunate because, you know, I think that uh, as a business owner, you want people to participate in what you're selling. You want to sell. So the idea that people feel that wine is inaccessible, I think, is a product of poor design. And I think that what we do here is we focus less on educating people, but focus more on talking to them and using our sommelier skills to find them a really appropriate wine for that they would enjoy. Now, what would you say to the people who say, oh, that's all wonderful, that's great, but I, I can't afford, you know, expensive bottles of wine. You know, that's just not that's in my okay. price point. That's totally okay. We're excited to get them a bottle of wine. Luckily, every single bottle of wine, no matter how cheap or expensive that is here, is a wine that we love. So no matter how much you're looking to spend, I'm, I'm happy with whatever you leave with because you got it here. So what's a good affordable wine? What would you pay for a good affordable wine? Where do we start? I mean, there's so many you can go for. I mean, one of my favorites is a uh, little Garnacha from um, Port Garage, part of me from Southern France, mm -hmm. uh, in the Southern Rhone uh, by the uh, by Andre Brunel and uh, just his uh, Grenache. It's a red wine, it's flat on its feet for a Pinot Noir drinker. It's delicious, under $15. It's farmed organically. I mean, what more could you ask for? It's a fantastic wine. So for two six packs of beer, you can get a great bottle of wine, right? Two six packs, maybe even more than $15, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, grapes, they come from the ground. You know, beer gets made in the tank. Right, right. So I understand your family were not wine drinkers, though, you know, for religious, cultural reasons. Tell us a little bit about it and your upbringing. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. I think like many in my parents' generation uh, that uh, moved to the country, you know, for you know, religious reasons or more, uh, they don't they didn't they don't drink. They don't participate in alcohol. So. You know, drinking alcohol was certainly uh, a foreign idea to me for many years. So when I first started working in restaurants, it was really kind of like my first, not only just tango with alcohol, but I was also thrust into the world of fine wine, which as you can imagine was a big learning curve. But uh, I had some great mentors and partners that walked me through the process and I was able to kind of learn very quickly. So tell us a little bit, about where were you originally born? Yeah, I was born in Lagos, Nigeria. Uh-huh. So when did you come to America? We came to America in 1990. So what were your first memories, you think? You remember you remember what it was like growing uh, up as a Nigerian in first, America? First memories, yeah. I mean, first memories, I think, were uh, my family first immigrated to Alabama. And here in, in, at, one, at some point, we were in Huntsville. I'll say my earliest memories are absolutely in Huntsville. And uh, we were really welcomed into the community by a gracious uh, couple, kind of uh, the pastor team and wife team at a local church. And they were really phenomenal. And the entire church community walked the, welcomed us into Huntsville. And that was really, I think, those are my first, most cherished memories as far as not only being alive, but also being in this country. Were you, was your family able to keep any cultural or religious customs from Nigeria, or are you all kind of Americanized cultural, now? Cultural, for sure. I mean, growing up, you know, I was absolutely inundated with Nigerian culture uh, every day. My parents almost hung out exclusively with Nigerians, you know, whether we were living in Alabama or when we went to Cleveland, Ohio. There was a group called the Nigerian Circle of Friends, and I was constantly around Nigerian children. We were constantly eating Nigerian food. My father had the Nigerian newspapers mailed to him regularly, so those were always sitting on the counter always listen to Nigerian music, Juju music was always being played about. So, you know, I, I certainly didn't feel very removed from the Nigerian experience outside of being in Nigeria, but we would go there often. So I, whenever we would visit, we'd stay for about a month. So uh, I, I certainly think my parents made an effort to make sure that, that we understood uh, where we were from and that we felt like we weren't distant. So how did your mom react when you told her you were going to be a sommelier? I guess her first reaction would have been, you drink alcohol, I guess, right? Yeah. Or did yeah, she know that I'm, already? I'm, I'm covered both of those in the same conversation. <laughs> yeah, what, what did she, yeah, how'd she react? But, I was doing, but you know what, she had a really fantastic response. She said that she didn't understand, but she said she was absolutely proud of me. And to this day, she's very proud and shares any articles about Wow, that, me, so. that, that's amazing mother. That's, it's, a, it's a fantastic mother. Yeah, it's sure. a fantastic mother. So, so now Halloween, we got all this candy in front of me and, and some wines here that you recommended. Uh, before we get into our, our wine tasting here with the Brad Squad, you know, Halloween's coming upon us here, which you know. Do they celebrate Halloween in Nigeria, by the way? Uh, you know, whether or not Nigeria celebrates Halloween, I think it depends on who you talk to. Uh, right. But uh, growing up, I think that based on my, my parents' uh, religious preferences, etc., at the time, and you know, just being in the early 90s, no, we didn't celebrate Halloween. Right. There was a Halloween party or a big school Halloween celebration. My parents would just make me sit out. I wouldn't go to school that day. Okay. All right. So I got all this candy here, Femi. Yeah. 
I got chocolates, Milky Ways, Reese's Pieces, Snickers. What else did they tell? I got her I got Hershey's chocolates here. I got some gummy bears, some sour gummies, some Skittles, yeah. and you had recommended some wine here. The first wine. The, the first wine I have here, it's a 2016. I'm reading this here on my yeah. cards. A 2016 Donna Fugata Benrai Pasito. See, I don't know what this is. You see, this would be intimidating yeah, to me. Sure. And I don't know what this is, where this is from, other than it sounds Italian. Yeah, it is definitely Italian. It's from the island of Sicily. It is a pasito wine, so it's made from dried fruits. But uh, the grape there is Zabibo, which is kind of uh, an indigenous grape to that region, very similar to Muscat. But uh, Ben Rie is, I think, a really delicious dessert wine that I think reminds me of orange sushi roll pops as a kid. So I think that that is really just a delicious wine to enjoy with candies like this, yeah. So it's going to be an orange-tasting... Grape. Oh, man. I see it's almost yellow in color, a little orangey, yellowish in color here. And, yeah, I and I. Just touch your real pop, the best way to describe it. And, and it would smell orangey to me. What should it smell like? I think it smells just like an orange touch your real pop. It does. It does. Yeah. It does. So, what would you pair this with? I think it could go well with anything, honestly. I mean, that's the great thing about sweet wines when you're working with desserts, because as long as you have something that is chocolatey and kind of salty um it'll play well and i think that if you've got like something like skittles or um like a starburst you'd be fantastic too but i think that out of this bunch here i would probably pick the re like a reese's or something like that, that a reese's fun. okay i got a reese's right here now when when you when you taste when you taste wine and food unless you tell me differently what how i was taught is you drink the wine first and then eat the food after is that correct yeah, whichever you want to do. Oh, it does, like oh you can eat the you can eat the chocolate like first. Around my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you can eat you can eat the chocolate first. Wouldn't that change the taste of yeah, the wine? Say eat the chocolate first and, and wash it down with a little Donna Fugata. Really? Okay. That's what yeah, I'm gonna do. do it. That's what I'm gonna do. One second here. There's a lot of wrappers here on this chocolate. I see that. All right. Well, Reese's. Good. Take some time to eat the Reese's. Yeah, yeah. One second. Yeah, exactly. I'm chewing and talking at the same time. Bad manners. My apologies. Looks like a very good vintage of Reese's. No, yeah, it is. And wow, it's excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's a really good it's a really good combination. It really tastes really good. It kind of pops in your mouth with the chocolate in it. Oh yeah, for sure. It's really really good. All right. So now, I guess I'll be drunk by the end of this. I have here the second wine pairing, which is the Mar Mar This is also, I assume, Italian. Okay, yeah. M Marenco Brichetto de Chi. Yeah. So is that Brichetto is, yeah, Brichetto is a grape that is uh, grown in uh, northwestern Italy around the, the foothills of, of Piedmont. So it's usually made into a sparkling wine, which you have here, kind of a semi-sweet, uh, semi-sparkling wine. And to me, Brichetto is fantastic with chocolate. So chocolate cakes, little true chocolate candy bars, like, you know, like a good Hershey's or something, even with some deeper chocolate can be a lot of fun. But to me, brichetto and chocolate is like cookies and milk. So find yourself any chocolate bike and uh, I think witness the wonder. So this is a sparkling wine, which I, I guess, you know, when people hear that it's champagne, it's like, but it's not from the yeah. champagne region, like, I guess. Honestly, don't even have to think about it like that. I think anybody who doesn't normally drink wine who likes to drink like soda, normally they'll find themselves just at home because it drinks like a delicious soda. It, it smells cherry to me a little bit. Is that what I'm smelling? Yeah, yeah definitely cherry, strawberry scented, raspberry. Yeah, like a raspberry. berry scent. That's yeah, what it smells. Sure. I love smelling wines. I'd always like, it always gets me excited to like guess if, you know, I'm smelling it properly or not, you know? Like, am I smelling oak? Am I smelling, I'm smelling cherries. And you said that this should go with also chocolate? Yeah, I, I think that could be a lot of fun. I've got a little brichetto here myself. Okay, great. So we're both now would now is it gonna be different if I is it gonna be different if I have the wine first and the chocolate after, or you really think you should wash it down? I think that uh, you know, when you're you're eating a meal and drinking wine, you know, you're enjoying things in different combinations. So I say, you know, just come do it however you want. All right, so this yeah. time I'm gonna drink the wine first and then do the chocolate after. Yeah. See how that goes. I, Wow, that's really good too. What is the price of these wines? Are these expensive wines I'm drinking? No, these are not expensive wines. Um, 
the Dona Fugata will probably be maybe the priciest of the bunch, which should be around, you know, twenty-five to thirty dollars retail. Mm -hmm. uh, the Riquetto de Aquí should be about twenty dollars retail. It's very good, excellent. All right, so the third wine, the third wine we have here, is the Formonos Madrid Tinto, which is a red wine from Spain. Now it says yeah. here. What what are the, I, I I mean there's a lot of information on this label here. What did, what information should I be taking off of this label? The Four Monos is a collaboration of four friends making wines in the Grados Mountains, a little west of Madrid. Kind of a natural wine project. The wine is mainly Granacha or Grenache, which is one of my favorite grape varieties. And you know what? It's just so juicy, delicious. It's got some tartness, almost kind of like a Jolly Rancher Rancher candy, and I think it's just so deep and delicious. So. And it's also a light wine, so I think it's something that you crave worthy around a, a bag of candy. All right, so let's see what, and this will have what kind of, this has more of like a, almost a licorice smell to me a little bit. Yeah. Am I smelling that right? Well, not, everybody wants, not everybody wants to drink uh, sweet wines uh, right. for dessert. So I think sometimes you've got to find a wine that uh, appeals to people that like drier style wines. Yeah. So. I just look for something that's kind of got some juiciness and some richness um, that can kind of play off uh, kind of those sweeter flavors you get in the candies. So then I'm going to take it's like kind yeah. of a sugary gummy worm. I'm going to eat that with this. I'll hear how it goes. Wow, I chew very loud. I can't believe that. But it's, gummies are take a long time to... You know what I should do? I should wash the gummies down with the wine. <laughs> How's it going? That's fantastic. Good. I'm going to tell you something. I never thought of drinking wine and having candy before in my life, but this is like a whole new thing for me now. This is going to be a new arena for a lot of people. Yeah, it's going to be, yeah, having candy and wine, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. That is absolutely amazing. All right, so now this... Don't tell the kids. Now this last one we have here, is this pronounced Gil or Gil? Um, Shrebe Cabinet, 2017. Yeah. Tell me a little yeah, bit about this wine. What is this? That's Shrebe, which is uh, another uh, grape that's grown in Germany, but uh, you know, in different versions, you know, it can offer some different characteristics. But Dow does a really fantastic job because theirs just tastes like mandarin orange, and it's got all these beautiful citrus flavors. Yeah. Uh, and dry wine, with just a touch of sugar. That I think, I mean, wow, if you like. Um, something to go along with like a um, Starburst candy or something that's red fruited or citrus candy. How cetera. about a, how about Skittles? We'll right. we'll go all the way down yeah. here to the end and get some Skittles. Have yeah. Some Skittles here. And um, I was gonna say you said orange. It's funny. I was gonna say it smells a little bit like tangerines to me. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a great descriptor. So I'm gonna have some Skittles here. I'm going to wash this down. And you said this is from Germany? It is definitely from Germany. Who's, who, what, what region right now is making really good wines that would surprise people, that you think? You know, everybody, everybody knows Burgundy and, you know, um, you know, Brunello and Napa. But what's like one of the regions that's making great wines and really, you know, unheralded? Sicily would be one for sure. Really? I think, I think one of my yeah, well, um, one of my favorite wine, the region to drink wine from is definitely Sicily, so that's definitely one to explore. I was just uh, in Sicily, I was just in Sicily about four weeks ago, and I actually went wine tasting in Sicily. Yeah, there are some great wines. Yeah, it was great, great wines around, there. Uh, uh, Volcano Mount Etna, um, but even more importantly, uh, there are some others, you know, there's uh, the Finger Lakes in New York, um, Australia makes, there's some really fantastic winemakers and passionate people making wine in Australia. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the conversation is growing every day for wines around the world. Well, this has been really fun, and uh, I have a lot more candy and wine to drink. But uh, I think there you got to get—I think you got to get back to work at some point. So, so yeah. Fe Femi, so where can people find out more about Graft Wine Shop and uh, Bar? Man, uh, they can follow us on social media. If you look on Instagram, you can find us at Graft G R A F T C H S. Um, and otherwise, you can check us out on our website, craftchs.com. So uh, 
we're always posting some fun updates on our uh, social media, so it's always fun to uh, pay attention to see what we're up, we're up to. I really appreciate you joining us. Before I, before I let you leave, though, we ask everybody this because this is a show about immigration and reaching Absolutely. your dreams, and uh, uh, everybody has different dreams. Tell me about what your American dreams are. Uh, have you reached them yet? And uh, uh, if not, what are they? My American dreams. Uh, man, I think that I think that every day that I uh, I, uh, I wake up and I come up with ideas and I try to make them to, uh, bring them to fruition. I think that's that's an American dream, right? Uh, so I feel very very blessed to be able to do what I do every day um, in Charleston, South Carolina. So I think that uh, there's always more to add, and uh, but it's always a point to uh, to give thanks for what I have currently. Well, I think I think you are the you know a great example of the American dream. You you were not born in the United States, and here you are, and uh, you educated yourself in something you didn't think that you would ever be so knowledgeable about wine, and you, you took that knowledge and you started your own business. and And we wish you all the best success and best of luck in it. And definitely, I, I may come down to Charleston and knock on your door one day. All right. Well, I look forward to it. Thank you for the support. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.